In today's video, Ripley is attacked on the potty. We see how terrible computers looked in the 90s and a serial killer's on the loose. This is Jace with Popcorn Recap, and today we will cover the movie Copycat. The film starts with Dr. Helen Hudson lecturing about serial killers in front of a huge crowd. During the lecture, she suddenly locks eyes with a man in the crowd that threatens her. She looks away for a second, and after looking back, the man is gone. After the lecture, Helen decides to visit the women's restroom. She is then suddenly attacked by the same man she locked eyes with during the lecture. The man is Daryl Cullum, a serial killer. Doesn't he know the men's restroom is across the hall? Daryl shoots the cop dead, but thankfully another cop comes running. Helen survives thanks to the cop. Helen develops agoraphobia due to the traumatic event. 13 months later, she wakes up and has a panic attack. She calls Andy, a gay man she lives with, to help find her medications. After finding her meds, she starts to calm down and has a chat with someone on her computer, getting AOL flashbacks. Meanwhile, a man watches a video of a woman jogging in a park on his computer. He pauses the video and zooms in on the woman's face, then displays a disturbing smile of satisfaction. Later that day, MJ and her partner Ruben are called to investigate a crime scene. MJ examines the crime scene to look for clues and evidence about the murder. She finds that the crime scene was compromised and a piece of evidence is missing. Helen struggles to get the newspaper at her front door because of her agoraphobia. Reminds me of myself after the 2020 quarantine. After getting the newspaper and reading it, she is frustrated that the murderer has killed its third woman. She calls the police and talks with MJ to provide insight on the murders, but isn't taken seriously. MJ and Ruben decide to visit Helen and talk to her about the murder cases after finding out who she is. They try to convince Helen to help them, but she refuses. MJ shows her the photos of the murder victims, and Helen has a panic attack. They decide to leave the photos with Helen for her to look at once she calms down. After a pep talk with Andy, Helen decides to look at the photos left by MJ and study them. Helen decides to take a shower. After her shower, she finds the red dress that she wore during Daryl's attack placed on her bed. Helen finally calls MJ and Ruben to discuss what she has learned from the photos given to her. She shares her expertise on the killings and tells the officers that the suspect's work is similar to a serial killer in the past. After a week or so, Helen is playing online chess when she receives an email from an unknown individual. The email contains a video clue about the killer's next potential victim. Helen calls MJ and Ruben back to show them the clue. After a brief discussion, they decide to copy a backup file of the video, but it was rigged with a self-destruct virus. The file is deleted the moment Ruben tries to make a copy of it. Helen tries to recover the file but isn't successful, and now they don't know who the next victim is. Concerned about her safety, Helen gets into an argument with the officers. She believes the killer is just playing mind games with her. Ruben decides to stay behind and keep Helen safe. They share a brief flirting moment during that night, but Ruben only gets a kiss on the forehead. Womp womp. Meanwhile, a man named Peter is called by his lover to watch a talk show together. Peter refuses, saying he is busy, and after kissing his lover on the forehead as well, rushes to leave the room at once. From the look of his face, it kind of looks like he's using her. He goes down to the basement into a room filled with photos of murdered women and surgical equipment. Inside that room, a woman is tied on a bed with a clear plastic bag covering her head. It was the woman showed in the email sent to Helen earlier. Peter proceeds to take care of the woman as he promised to do. The next morning, a new victim is found on top of a hill near a no-dumping sign. MJ is on the scene and Reuben arrives late. They examine the crime scene and try to look for more clues. MJ visits Helen again to discuss her findings on the most recent victim. After hearing the lab results of the victim from Reuben, Helen realizes something. She searches her computer for records of past cases and finds out that the suspect is copying the work of another serial killer in the past. Later, another victim is found near a gas station. MJ and Reuben are once again investigating the scene. They receive a call from Helen and she helps them find important clues at the crime scene. Helen tells MJ that the recent murder was copied from yet another serial killer in the past. Reuben finds a note at a phone booth near the crime scene and it's addressed to Helen. He then decides to pay her a visit for some more questions about the murder case. MJ, meanwhile, calls the police station to send backup to Helen's house and alert the police guarding her there. At Helen's house, someone breaks in while the policeman that was guarding her is distracted. Helen decides to investigate, and upon seeing that her guard isn't there, she starts to panic when she sees that there's an intruder. She tries to get out of her house, but fails because of her agoraphobia and experiences another panic attack. After going back inside her house, she grabs a knife to protect herself from the intruder. Fortunately, Reuben arrives just in time to scare off the intruder and save Helen from harm's way. Helen expresses her frustrations about the failure of the police to protect her with Reuben and MJ. 
Since Helen doesn't want to move out of her house, the officers decide to simply tighten the security at her house. Back at the police headquarters, MJ and her team discuss the recent developments of the serial killer case. After the meeting, the commissioner decides to tell MJ's superior that he doesn't want Helen to be involved with the case anymore. MJ ignores the orders of her superior and visits Helen to show the note they found at the phone booth earlier. By analyzing the note, they gain some insights into the killer's personality. Later, Helen decides to study some files about the case as she heads to bed. She then finds some insects on her bed and starts to freak out. She tries to find where the insects are coming from and finds a book with a human's finger used as a bookmark. MJ returns to Helen's house with her team to investigate the situation and takes the time to comfort her. Shortly after, an investigator approaches them to discuss the book that Helen found under her bed. The book was written by Daryl Callum, the serial killer that tried to kill Helen 13 months ago. They discovered that the book was autographed by Daryl and addressed to Helen. Following these developments, they decide to have a video call with Daryl, who is currently in prison. MJ begins the talks with Daryl, but he refuses to cooperate unless Helen talks to him. She agrees, and he reveals that the name of the killer is Peter Curtin, which is similar to another serial killer from the past. In exchange for Helen's panties, Daryl says that a friend of his will meet up with the killer that night and reveals the meeting location. Who the heck would agree to trading up their underwear? MJ quickly calls Reuben, telling her about the lead they got, and springs into action. As MJ leaves, Daryl continues talking to Helen and tells her that he is death and life for her. Later that night, Andy tells Helen that he is going for a night out with his friend, leaving her alone at home. Back at the police station, a commotion with people that are being arrested erupts. Reuben was taken as a hostage during the commotion, and MJ attempts to take control of the situation. Despite her efforts, though, Reuben was shot and killed by the hostage taker. MJ decides to visit Helen after that to tell her that Reuben is dead. She thinks that Helen and Reuben had a thing. During that time, Helen's phone rings and goes to voicemail. As the phone call was being recorded, Helen hears one of the speeches she gave during her lectures being played from the other end of the call. In a club somewhere, Peter hangs up the phone after hearing Helen's voice. He then sprinkles an unknown substance on a drink. With drinks in hand, he slowly walks toward his next victim. This time, Peter's next target is Andy, Helen's gay friend. Through the tap placed on Helen's phone, the police were able to trace where the call came from. During this time, Helen realized that one of the speeches she gave contained the order of the past serial killers that the suspect was copying. They now have an idea about the next move of the killer. MJ and the police rush to the location of the phone call earlier, but they are too late. The killer already made his move, and this time the victim is Andy. The next morning, Andy's dead body is found floating near the docks. Back at Helen's house, she grieves the death of her friend while MJ is comforting her. She then snaps out of it and focuses on discussing the killer's next move. She points out that the killer is most likely driving a gold VW bug. At the police station, MJ orders her team to look into people that are registered possessing the said vehicle. After getting the list of people owning a gold VW bug, MJ shows it to Andy's friend. It was then that they successfully identify the killer's true identity, Peter Foley. The police launch an operation to capture the suspect, but they are too late once again. Peter is no longer home and the police walk into a trap. The operation is an utter failure and Peter's house burns down because of the traps he placed. Helen watches TV and sees that the operation to capture Peter is a failure. During that time, her doorbell rings and when she checks who is at the door, she sees two policemen. When she opens the door, she finds out that Peter was disguised as one of the policemen. Peter quickly kills the other police in front of Helen and then proceeds to capture her. After a short struggle, Foley pins Helen to the ground and then punched her in the face and renders her unconscious by injecting her with some drug. Sometime later, MJ arrives at Helen's home and finds the police guarding the area dead. She then calls for backup and starts investigating the scene. Once inside the house, she discovers a video camera with a note telling her to play the recorded video. The video shows Peter in possession of the unconscious Helen. Peter shows off his plans and tells MJ that she already knows where she would find him and Helen. He also told her to come alone if she was a smart cop, and that he would kill Helen if she fails to do so. Later on, Helen wakes up and finds herself in the same situation she was in 13 months ago when Daryl tried to kill her. She realizes that Peter Foley is trying to perfectly recreate the murder that Daryl tried to pull off. Peter proudly shows off all the work he has done to Helen. While making his preparations, Peter is agitated by Helen. While he almost snaps, Peter is able to regain control and proceeds with his plans. MJ rushes to Peter's location. Despite being told to wait for backup by her superior, MJ decides to ignore the orders and enters the area. MJ goes inside the restroom and finds Helen about to be hanged. She tries to look for Peter who is hiding in the restroom but is caught off guard. 
Peter attacks MJ, and after another brief struggle, he shoots her down. After seeing this, Helen attempts to hang herself, causing Peter to panic and cut the wire that was tied to her neck. Helen falls on the floor, and while Peter attempts to restrain her again, she stabs him in the leg with broken glass she found on the floor. Helen escapes the restroom and runs toward the rooftop. In a desperate attempt to flee danger, she is able to overcome agoraphobia and walks outside on the rooftop area to scream for help. Peter is right behind Helen and is on the move to finally kill her. After a brief conversation between them, Peter attempts to stab Helen with his knife. He fails as MJ shoots him from behind. MJ survived due to her bulletproof vest. MJ fires multiple gunshots at Peter and lands one on his head that causes his death. Both Helen and MJ look at each other with a sigh of relief that the ordeal is finally over. The film ends by showing Daryl Callum in prison. He is writing a letter to one of his disciples telling him to keep it simple and glory will be his. He ends the letter by saying, happy hunting. We assume another killer will come after Helen. Thanks for watching this recap. I really expected more aliens. Well, until next time. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.